Hey, welcome back. Mike Adams here with Audacity Training. This is section five of a five section series that I'm doing on how to record and edit a simple podcast. I guess I could put it that way. Check out this screen. If you watched the previous four videos, then this should look familiar to you. I hope you did watch those. If not, you're kind of jumping in at the end here. So this is our audio. This is what we've done so far with this. And what I want to do in this video is I want to mix and render this down to a brand new track. In other words, I want Audacity to take the audio that we have here, mix it down, and put it in a brand new track so that we can look at the project overall and make some decisions on it uh, from there. So what I want to do is let's select both of these tracks. And again, they're synced together. That's why we have the clocks. And let's come back up to the Tracks drop-down menu to Mix. And let's mix and render to a new track. The difference between mix and render and mix and render to a new track is that mix and render will take the existing tracks and replace them with the new one. In other words, these two tracks will disappear and they'll be gone and they'll become instead one new one. If we do mix and render to a new track, these two tracks stay intact and we get a third, in this case, a third additional track. So let's use the mix and render to a new track setting. And let's click on this and see what it'll give us. And just like that, we have a new track at the bottom of our project. And this new track is a combination of the two tracks above it. They're mixed together so that we can see them better in one track. We can get a better uh, visual representation of what they are. Now, because we have sync lock tracks turned on, that bottom track is synchronized to the top two. I don't want it to be. So let's separate them. And the way we separate sync lock tracks from each other is we insert a label track in between them. So let's come up to the Tracks drop-down menu one more time and add new. And this time we're going to add a label track. And when we add the label track, it always puts it at the bottom. We don't want it there. We can drag it up or we can come to the three dot method and we can say move track up. And when we move the track up, it separates groups of sync lock tracks. In other words, that bottom track is no longer synchronized to the other tracks. You can see that the other tracks still have the clocks. The bottom track does not. So I can take this bottom audio and I can move it anywhere I want to move it um, just to do with it what I want to do. I'm going to minimize that label track because it doesn't need to be that big. And I'm going to minimize these other two tracks so that we can look at our final track here, our existing track, and we can make some decisions based on it and it alone. So I'm going to select that bottom track, and then let's do something about these peaks, shall we? Let's put a little bit more compression on this bottom track. Now, you don't want to go nuts with compression. If you put too much compression on a track, sometimes you don't even need compression. Like we talked about last time, if your dynamic range is okay, you probably don't need to compress. But if we do compress, we have to be careful with how much we put on We've already compressed these tracks, or at least one of them, up above in the last video. And so I want to compress a little bit more to get that dynamic range closer. We've got those two sections of music that are still coming in kind of hot. And I want to tame those down just a little bit by adding just a little bit more compression to it. Not a lot, because again, if you overcompress, you'll hear it. You'll hear kind of a pumping sound as the compressor kicks in and out. And we don't want to do that. So... I've got that track highlighted. Let's come up to the Effect drop-down menu, Volume and Compression. Let's go back to our compressor. And this time, let's leave it set at about a negative 12, negative 12, 5 is what I have here. We'll keep the ratio at a 4. Uh, we've made the knee a little bit sharper there so that it's the compressor is going to uh, react a little bit different now. We're leaving the other settings pretty much as they were. And I'm going to click Apply, and we'll see the... Um, those high peaks kind of brought down closer to the low peaks and the low peaks brought up just a little bit to match the high peaks. So I'm going to click apply. And that gave us just a little bit more compression on it. Again, I don't want a whole lot. Uh, we're not at that point yet. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to loudness normalize, not normalize, but I want to loudness normalize this track, LUFS, L-U-F-S. I want to get this track to a 
negative 19 LUFS, negative 19 dB of LUFS. LUFS is perceived loudness. It's the perceived loudness of our track or a project or a file overall. It's not really based on peaks. It's based on the overall loudness of the track. And for a mono podcast, the LUFS uh, level should be a negative 19 dB LUFS. For a stereo podcast, you want to shoot for a negative 16 dB of LUFS. This is a mono podcast, so let's put loudness compression on it or loudness effect on it to a negative 19. And to do that, we come up to volume and compression once again, to loudness normalization, not normalize, loudness normalization. And we make sure that our perceived loudness is what we have selected. I can also select RMS loudness if you're doing ACX audiobooks. This is where you want to level the RMS loudness. We're not going to do that. We're going to go to perceived loudness, which is LUFS. And we're going to shoot for a negative 19 dB of LUFS. We don't care about normalizing stereo channels. We don't have any. That last thing that says treat mono as dual mono recommended, I don't recommend that. I don't know why it says recommended. If you check that and you apply this setting with that checked, your your loudness is actually going to be 3 dB lower than a minus 19. In other words, it's going to come out to a minus 22. I did the math on it once, and I figured it out several years ago. I don't remember what it was. But you can Google that if you want to, or you can just take my word for it, because if I do check this, treat mono as dual mono, my actual LUFS level is going to be 3 dB lower than whatever I put in this window. So I don't recommend that. Now I'm going to click apply. It's going to adjust my file to a negative 19 dB of LUFS. It doesn't care about peak level. It's not looking at peak level. This is not normalized. So I may have to come back in and put a limiter on it if it uh, looks like it's going to start clipping. So let's apply this at a minus 19 dB of LUFS. And that looks pretty good. If we go into, if we come over here into our scale and we right click, and we go to the DB view, which is now called log logarithmic view. It used to be called DB view. And we look at the actual decibel level. You can see that we're getting up there. We're getting pretty close to zero DB, which we really don't want to do. So I'm going to right click here and go back to the linear view. And now let's come back through and let's put a limiter on this. Even though we're not getting any red spikes, let's put a limiter on it. So we're going to come back up to the effect drop down menu. This time I'm going to go to legacy because I like the legacy limiter more than the new limiter that's now in audacity, which is basically another compressor. Any limiter, I guess, is a compressor, but the legacy limiter for me is just a little bit easier to work with. So let's bring up the legacy limiter. And when we're talking about the LUFS level and LUFS level as far as the limiter goes, we want to shoot for negative 2 dB of peak value. So let's take our negative 5 here and let's bring it down. Which I'm going the wrong way. Let's bring it down to a negative 2 dB. So a negative 2 dB, we're going to have to leave our hold time at 10. We're not going to make up any gain. We're not talking about uh, left or right gain. We're going to leave it a soft clip. It's just a kinder, gentler limiter. It goes on a little bit smoother. Again, we're not applying makeup gain. And let's apply this and see what it does. And to knock that level down just a little bit, that's fine. Let's solo this. And let's take it back to the beginning. And let's listen to it together. Welcome to the Fake Podcast. This is the podcast about nothing. And I'm glad you're here. Hey, welcome to the podcast. I'm glad you're here. Again, this is a podcast about nothing. There's nothing going on here. I'm sitting in this boring room with lights shining in my face and a camera pointed at me. And I'm just recording some audio so that I can get something laid down here so that we can make a fake podcast and do a little bit of editing on it and see what we can do with it. So that's about all I have to say. Hey, thanks for joining me on this uh, riveting podcast. I'm glad you joined me. I'm glad you're here. 
And in the next episode, we will continue on this journey. So for now, take care. Not bad for a fake podcast. That'll work. We have a little bit of fluctuation in the peak levels, but overall our minus 19 uh, dB of luffs is still intact. And what I would like to do right now with this track soloed is I want to export it as an MP3, or you could export it as a wave. I usually export as a wave. I keep my files in wave format as long as I can because they are lossless. So what I would normally do with this one is export it as a wave file, and then I would um, upload it to Auphonic at Auphonic.com and do my final mastering there just to make sure that everything's kosher. But you don't have to do that. This file is ready to go. If you want to post this as a, well, not this particular one, but if you're editing your own podcast and you've got to this point and you're satisfied with the overall sound and appearance of the WAV file, you can export it as an MP3 and upload it to your podcast host and you're done. So it's it's that simple. So what I want to do right now then is I want to come up to file. I want to export audio. I'm going to export it onto my computer. And I'm going to call it Project 5. Let's, let's instead of a WAV file, let's go ahead and make it a MP3 file. So Project 5 MP3. And let's see where we're at here as far as uh, my file system goes. I want this to be episodes. I want a project, and I want a Project 5. And let's put it in the Audacity folder. And let's export this thing as an MP3 so that we can see what's going on. And then we'll import it right back into our uh, project here. So I'm going to save this and select Export. And it did just that. It exported. So let's come back over to my Finder window. We're going to Project, Project 5, Audacity. There's our MP3 file. Let's bring that baby back in here. And let's see what we can do with it. And there it is right there. So I have successfully exported my file. And then I have successfully re-imported it. And the only reason that I re-imported it again is so that I could look at it. I want to take one more look. That's just what I do sometimes. I don't always do it. But I do a lot of the time, probably most of the time. Once I've exported it, I will drag it back in and I will just take one final look at it to make sure that it looks good. Because remember. You're editing with your eyes, not just your ears. And if there's any red spikes in here or anything like that that I need to get rid of, this is like my final check before I upload it to my uh, hosting service as an MP3 or if I'm doing video on YouTube before I re-import it back into the video. So in a future video, I want to show you that. I want to show you how to edit audio for a video because it's a little bit different process. But hey, that's all I've got for you right now. We have taken this uh, non-essential or this podcast about nothing, non-essential podcast, and we recorded it together. We imported the music together. We did the auto duck where we could duck down the music while we had intro and outro. We did the main body of the podcast. We got them synchronized together so that they'll never be apart. And then we mixed them down to a new track just so that we could get a little bit better feel for what we had overall. We applied a little bit more compression to that track. And then once we were happy with it, we exported that track as an MP3 file and imported it back in here just so that we can look at it one more time. And this is what we've got. This is the final project. So I hope you benefited from these five episodes here on, uh, on my YouTube channel, these five videos, kind of walking through that step. Again, very informal. If this had been a real podcast, you know, there would have been a little more content, content editing and mistakes edited out, especially if you're working with someone, if someone, if you've got a client who, um, you know, who you are editing for, there's a lot of work. I admire you for doing that. There's a lot of work involved in editing a podcast, but this is the basic overall flavor. This is what we can do in Audacity. This is what we did in Audacity. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you benefited from it. If so, leave me a comment below and let me know because that means a lot to me. So I'm going to let you go for now. 
And until next time, take care.